Thank you, Katie. Um, I'm going to make the cameraman work for his money and use a roving mic, so you're going to have to keep up with me a little bit. I've also got to keep to time, because I know we're running late and Scott's given, already given me the evils, and I haven't even started. So, let's kick off. It's coming, not coming up on that screen, so I'll have to keep looking back. But what I'm going to cover off today, as quick as I can, as succinct as I can, is what we said we were going to do at this stage last year and how we've actually managed to accomplish that. A consumer-based situational analysis, so what are the consumers saying from our work in this last year, but what has changed since last year? And then an outline of what we're aiming to do coming up in the financial new year. So what are we going to implement based on the changes and the learnings that we've had? So to kick things off, quick recap, obviously from a holiday, domestic holiday visitation point of view, we're up internationally 4.8 as well. So I'm going to talk primarily around holiday, holiday visitation to the destination. So just to remind you of those numbers, I'm not going to go into any more depth because of course Valerie already did that this morning. It's no surprise I think to anyone in this room when you invest in tourism you get results and we can see clearly from the actual figures that when the tourist, tourism turbocharged stimulus came in we've seen the results from that. I'm going to dive into a bit more detail about where those results have come from. First of all, obviously, I'm going to cover the marketing. Now, if you've seen any of my presentations or any of the team's presentations that we've done, you'll know that we follow a customer journey. And for this last year, we've focused on three key areas of that journey. So branding and awareness, messaging conversion, and experience and advocating. We've also divvied that up into certain areas that were of focus. So messaging conversion over this last year has obviously been the main focus with 70% of the energy and the finance, 20% to branding and awareness and 10 to experience and advocating. So what did that look like? We've got two streams that we've had thanks to turbocharging um, tourism. So I'm gonna break it down into two different reports. So I'll focus on marketing to start with, which is our core marketing activity. Now, obviously, with branding and awareness, what we talk about there are the underlying competitive differences that we have against every other destination. Now, of course, the sea of sameness, we've got our turtles. Everybody's got turtles. But what our focus is, is around the nature, the wildlife, the scenery, the things that you can only get in the territory, and, of course, our Aboriginal 65,000-year-old living culture. They are the key motivators to people coming to the NT. There are key difference. But of course, we've still got the turtles. Now, what we found out over this last year with our brand campaigns is that over the years, we've generated a, a consistent message in market, a repetition that consumers can recognize and know instinctively now what they're going to get from the NT. So we are now over-indexing with our um, campaigns in believability, new news, it piques interest, it's relevant, value for money, makes people want to go now, stands out and informative. So those are the areas that we are over indexing now on our campaigns. So the message is getting through, the underlying wildlife, nature, Aboriginal culture is getting through to the Australian consumers. Now, internationally in brand and awareness, of course, we've got our main partner, which is Tourism Australia. So we let them do the heavy lifting, go into market, create that brand awareness. When somebody's interested in Australia, we swoop in and try and get them to the NT. Another key partner is TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor allows us to target consumers who are interested in travel, not just to Australia, but around the world. Then we can retarget those consumers that are interested in what we've got, or are interested in Australia and make sure the tourism, this, uh, the tourism and Northern Territory message is inserted into their ecosystem wherever they're looking on those pages. So of course the campaigns that we're involved in is the Working Holiday Maker campaign, Undiscover, and of course the Dundee campaigns. But we're also a major player in their signature experiences, especially in the Aboriginal cultural experiences that we have in, uh, in the Territory. Also, we're focusing on nine key markets within 
our international markets. We work across the consumer space, across the trade space in those markets. But each of those markets are treated uniquely. So we look at the market, we look at the makeup of those consumers, and we make sure whatever message, whatever products we're featuring are the ones that are going to motivate and trigger that consumer to travel. Before there was the outback, or Australia, or anything at all. find its spirit under every rock, in every forest, and inside every flying, swimming, walking thing on earth. It's the story of our creation. It's a connection we all feel to something bigger than the Alpha. From a time, long before time, in Australia's Northern Territory, Every day is still in the dream time. It's why we say, you haven't been down under till you've been out back. So obviously you can see the key messages that we're getting through with this particular piece of content. But this will be aimed at a particular market to make sure it triggers whatever that consumer is looking for. One of the prime examples of this was the launch of the Australia's Great Wild North this year across North America. It went into IMAX theatres and was a resounding success. It's now into China across their IMAX theatres as well and will still have more global releases later. So down to messaging. What else have we done with our core method, core budget. Our focus, and we mentioned this last year, was going to be creating this fashionability around the territory, making sure we are on trend, making sure that we're on the top of everybody's to-do list by featuring on all the listicles or the lists that people very much look at when they think about digestible content. So we tried to get on every list we could, and we managed to get on things like the New York Times, we got on the Lonely Planet, Experience Oz. In fact, we got on so many lists that they started writing articles articles about how many lists we're actually on. So I think we can put a tick on that for being a success. But of course, with our general PR, we made sure we got around the territory from Arnhem Land through to Kakadu, Darwin, Catherine, um, Litchfield, Tennant Creek, um, Alice Springs, Curtin, uh, sorry, Alice Springs, Curtin Springs, uh, Kings Canyon, and of course, Uluru. Each one had focuses through our media. Even internationally, we're not just talking about the destination, we're talking about how you get here, how you get around, and how much time you need to spend. Because people, especially internationally, need to know that before they book their holiday, so they book enough time. So what does it mean? In terms of results, what we've seen, and this is Australian traveling audience, we've seen a 5% growth in, a, in prompted and unprompted awareness. So that's 5% of the Australian travelling public, which accounts to quite a few thousand people, which are now aware of the Northern Territory if they weren't already. More awareness means more opportunity to convert that awareness into bookings. Now, we've worked over this last year with more partners in more ways at more points of time in the year than ever before. Now, most of that is partly down to the turbocharged stimulus. But we've gone out and we've covered as many touch points as we can, making sure people can book wherever and whenever possible. We've also integrated it into major media partners, and we've refined it each and every time. So what we've found out now, by refining these campaigns over time, with the latest uh, figures show that we have met or exceeded our targets 77% 77, 77 of the time. So out of all the campaigns, 77% of them have met or exceeded our targets. The others may have fallen just short, but we've still put heavy targets on them to try and meet. Um, as you can see, the, the metrics that we look for these sort of campaigns, does it peak interest, relevant holiday, value for money, want to go now. They're the sort of things we make sure that these campaigns do, as well as convert the actual travel. So as you can see, the cooperative campaigns have been making a difference with our core marketing funds. I'll go through the figures a bit later when we talk about the turbocharge activities. But when we're talking about um, people coming to the territory, we want to make sure that they 
positively review and recommend the territory to others. So that's where our experience in advocating comes in. Now, last time I spoke to you a year ago, we were sitting at about 25% of uh, tourists detracting others from coming to the territory. That's a quarter of our tourists telling others not to come. Thankfully, those figures are starting to move in the opposite direction. So we've seen a growth in the positive recommendations and we've seen a decline in the detractors. The numbers are still, uh, you know, 20% of all people is not great, but they're moving in the right direction. And that's down to you making sure you focus on your customers and making sure they positively review your business, your, the experience they've had in your business and the destination. And in terms of the destination, we're also doing our, our part by getting the influencers that talk to relevant audiences and focusing on those influences, such as Ms. Melissa Finley, had 45 stories across her audience of 270,000 people. 45 stories she created for us. Carmen Hutter, 50 stories, over 360,000 people. And in theme of, of this morning, we featured a hot spring, of course, because that hot spring image got posted, reposted by Instagram's own account, which went out to 243 million people and got 1.2 million likes. So that's a huge amount of people now exposed to the territory through Instagram. So that's the core marketing activities. Moving on to the turbocharge activities now, what we've ended up with is $26.5 million through that turbocharged stimulus of $103 million. So that's what I'm going to focus on now. Each of those, or that $26 million was divided in, into different categories, different areas of focus. Now, those areas of focus were where we saw the opportunity. The opportunity was, was to fill up those planes that were left partly empty from the Impex project with holiday visitors, to fill up those beds left partly empty from the Impex project, fill up those with holiday visitors. That's the opportunity we had. So what we did is went out and tried to source as many airlines and new routes as possible. Now, we've secured 23,000 new seats into the territory, but that doesn't actually include the new Qantas route changes. But we did manage to get 23,000 new seats. Um, that, did, that evaluates into 22.8 million if we can fill all 23,000. Also, if you have a look on the right, I don't expect you to read all that, but that's over 30 campaigns with our airline partners that we've been able to put into market thanks to the turbocharge funds. We've also looked at cooperative packaging, so working with those partners that package up the territory and make sure that those packages are front and centre through our campaigns, so such as the NT Now campaign, Expedia, What If, Flightcentre, Hotels.com, all benefited from the turbocharged funds because we had more campaigns through them. And of course, when we talk about Jetstar, we partnered with Jetstar to get to a mass audience through MasterChef and The Bachelorette, which were huge successes in, the ter in, the, in conversion terms. We've also partnered with Australian Traveller. Now, this was uh, the first part of a two-part uh, partnership where we're looking at the Australian Traveller um, viewer or in, uh, online engager. And what we're aiming to do is not only seed more territory content, but actually find out which content motivates that Australian traveller consumer down the funnel to book. So we're learning as we go, making sure that content stimulates that consumer down the funnel. But we've also been able to pull in partners such as yourselves to feature through Australian Traveller content and has so far generated over 17,000 leads to operators through the Australian Traveller partnership. Top End Wedding, Valerie mentioned, or the Minister, sorry, mentioned that earlier. It's been a long-term project, but thanks to Turbocharge, we've been able to really amplify and extend the reach of that. I've got to ask you something. Marry me? Yes. <laughs> Where does meant to drop everything and fly to Darwin? It's important to Lauren. I always imagined getting married back home in Darwin. What are we talking? Are we talking tribal dancing? Did we do face paint? Mum! <laughs> Dad? Hello. What's that thing? Say hello to your grandfather. 
Grandpa? Grampy Gramps? What's going on? Where's Mum? I just woke up and she was gone. You didn't think to tell me all this? I thought maybe she'd be back by now. Oh. I've always been able to see it. Both my parents walking me down the aisle. I can't get married if my mum isn't here. So we're going to go and find her. Dad, I need you to plan the wedding. Hey? If we find mum, you're off the hook. But I don't even know where to start. Do you know where she went? What? To Catherine? To Catherine. Une minute. Mm -hmm. Quit here bashing me, love. Yeah, she caught a knee dragon to Catherine. Now bugger off. Au revoir! I need to find my mum. When you're hurting, where do you go looking? Back home. Mum's from the Tiwi Islands, but I've never gone to Tiwi. How about we just go up there? Look at where I am because of you. I'm in the top end of the country. It's your place. Time to take it to the family now. Hold on to your munchies, because it's about to get crunchy. Weddings change people. <clears throat> Not just the bride and groom. Make this wedding romantic and you'll get Arnie back. Marriage is a journey, and what better place to start that journey than right here. <laughs> Our home. He's two hours late. Anyone got any jokes? So, thanks. So obviously that's in uh, movies um, in a month's time. So please get out, tell your friends and family if they haven't already been told about the movie. But the turbocharge funding has allowed us to extend and leverage off that movie much further than we would have been able to anyway. So what we did was create a, a series from the movie. So at the same time the movie was being filmed, we created a web series which not only appeals to a different audience to the cinema goer, but also takes that cinema goer off out of the, the movie theatre and into the online environment. What that does then is allow us to tag that viewer, engage with that viewer and target, retarget that viewer with the territory messaging. So we've been able to really pull the viewer outside just the cinema atmosphere into the digital atmosphere through this series. So every movie has the behind the scenes stuff, but we decided to focus specifically on one department, locations. A location scout's responsible for sourcing and securing every location you see in a movie. This is beautiful. Uh, no toilets on premises, Paul Lake. Sound department's gonna hate that waterfall. Stitch up. Shit access for trucks. Nightmare. <laughs> Stitch up is essentially any day-to-day -day complication. Come in the form of a task, obstacle, or a person. Looks like you might have to live in the present for once. Oh, dear. Or like is any dilemma that can cause deep physical or emotional pain. Snake, snake on location. <laughs> then you've got a nightmare, which is essentially a ball like stretched over several days and nights. Haven't heard a word I've said, have you? Cool, on it. On what? What? On another planet is what? It's gonna be a really long six weeks. So by amplifying both the film and the series through the media partners, and it started back in the Sundance um, premiere we had in January, goes through the Today Show with the Top End Wedding, which the uh, winners has just been announced for that, um, through the nine network channels, um, and of course through the actual launch of Location Scouts through digital channels. Then we'll have the actual wedding um, in about, might help me out here, about three weeks' time, four weeks' time, when the movie launches. Um, that will be, that will gain us exposure to around 10 million Australian consumers. You add in our conversion partners, and what we end up with is a total of 12 million consumers, but not just aware of the NT, but now can convert into actual travel. So we've got um, big high hopes for, for the movie and the location scouts. We hope that you'll be able to then um, latch onto the trailer, encourage your friends and family to go see it. Because after the marketing's been in market, you're gonna have to be living in a cave not to have heard about the movie. The movie and Location Scouts, as I said, is a long-term project, but it also has longevity in market. So as I mentioned, the, 
The Sundance was the first premiere, but we started off with PR late last year. That PR has been continuing and will continue into April and May, based on the launch being May the 2nd, and continue on into the future. Around um, our passion points, our sectors, of course, we got a boost from the turbocharge as well. That is things like the hiking. So Kakadu, Jatbala, Larapinta all got a boost through our campaigns. Um, thanks to the Alice Springs Council, um, the um, Tourism Central Australia um, and the turbocharge funding, we were able to bring Bondi Rescue to the centre. They focused on the mountain biking, hiking, unique running events and, of course, the Henley on Todd. So, Again, this is a big passion point focus that drives not just awareness, but people's real motivation to travel, such as the, uh, the Eastern Alice mountain bike race, which is part of our mountain bike campaign, which started this month. We've also had digital activity feeding out over the last um, nine months, featuring all the adventure activities across the territory. Food was another focus that we were able to focus on through Turbocharge. Um, we managed to get PR content out through publications such as the New York Times. But with the Hospitality NT's help, we managed to get a series called the NT Signature Dish Series out, which provided a lot of content for us to then feed out to journalists and media um, nation and globally, nationwide and globally. So big push on food and beverage, which we've never really had the resources to do before. Territory Arts Trail, the Minister mentioned this one earlier. This is our focus on our culture, 65,000 year old living culture, but through the arts, through the events, through the galleries that, that populate the entire NT. So this has gone nationwide. Um, you'll see the ad on TV if you haven't already. Um, Empire is going to be picking it up, so you'll see it very soon um, through Empire as well. But it's throughout the nation, throughout billboards, out of home, and of course TV and online. History also got a push. This is through the Territory Tribute uh, event. So it's a nine week event, but we're going to push it for longer and really make sure history becomes a core part of our messaging when uh, somebody's interested in the historic uh, background of a destination. So we've identified 15,000 people that have been motivated by the history of a destination, and we make sure that we're targeting those 15. We've also been given uh, the funds to review and align the territory tourism brand with the territory's master brand, which is balanced possible. That's still underway, but we're in the last stages of uh, testing, which will then be able to define what creative look we go with. So what we're talking about here is the underlying principles, the underlying positioning of the brand, not necessarily the tagline, the colours or the fonts. We're talking about what the brand stands for. And of course, what we don't want to lose is what we know the brand already stands for. It already has an emotional connection. It has a travel, uh, travel trigger. It already delivers on the promise that we, we push through our messaging. And of course, it aligns with what uh, the customer is already telling people about the destination. So those are the core points we want to make sure remain with the review and, where possible, enhanced. So where are we tracking with all this sort of activity? And this is only a snapshot of the activity. Where are we actually tracking? Well, as the minister mentioned this morning, our target was 53,000 incremental visitors from the turbocharging activities alone. What we've been able to accomplish as of this month is 56,000. So we've already achieved the target of 56,000 above our 53,000 target. So we've still got three and a bit months of activity and reporting to go. So we've well and truly smashed that target um, thanks to the team's hard work. So that's an overview of the, um, the two streams. What does it mean for the future? Well, to that, we have to look about what impact it's had on the consumer. So we can safely say that the consumer is now more considerate or considering or intending to travel to the territory more than ever before. We can also say that our focus on TV and digital is the best combination. And using that combination, we've achieved growth in awareness across all the age groups, especially the um, 18 to 29 year olds. We've also seen a change in the behavior of the over 50s, our core domestic market, 
because those over 50s are now looking to go to newer places instead of places they've been before. We've seen a drop in that behaviour of going to places they're familiar with, which bodes well if they haven't been to the Territory in a long time or have never been, because we can really pick those people up and target them. There's been a slight change in the recommendations. It's actually moved up from three to second in the biggest motivators for travel. So again, it shows you what that social media, what that recommendation and review uh, importance is for your business, because it's now second as a key motivator to Australian travellers. I mentioned before that um, we're starting to move the numbers in the right direction in terms of our net promoter score. So these are people that are positively promoting the territory. What we've been able to see is um, more people promoting positively. But when we break that down, what, where we see that growth is from our family market. So they're the, uh, the 30 to, to 50 year olds that are more positively promoting. The growth area in our uh, 18 to 29 year olds is actually increasing in detractors. So that's not a good sign. It means we either we're over promising or we're under delivering to the 18 to 29 year olds when they come to the territory. It's something we've got to be conscious of both as an industry and a destination body. Um, internationally, safety is still number one, but the gaps closing between world-class nature and wildlife as a core importance to travel. Um, and Australia is still declining when it comes down to uh, uh, consideration and intention to travel. The big growth in those markets are seen from um, both Japan and Canada, which is no surprise when you see who the movers are when you look at the international net promoter score. So both Japan and Canada are moving up when it, term when it comes to down to positive reviews. Everybody else is moving down and that also relates to visitation. So you can see the trend in real time. When it comes to our icons, we're still at the top of the list. In fact, Uluru has moved up one place from fourth to third, um, but we're still the most recommended destination or icons across Australia. And still Darwin gets a mention down there, which is good to see. When you break that down from Eastern to Western markets, what we find out is the Eastern markets don't see Uluru as highly as, um, as Kakadu, but do position Darwin higher. So that's an opportunity for the top end to really focus on those eastern markets. The western markets obviously uh, are very consistent with the overall numbers, um, which is Kakadu and Uluru up the top there. So what does that mean for moving forward? With those insights, we can say that the share of resource is going to stay around the same. So we've still got to fill those beds. We've still got to fill those air seats. And we're going to focus on that. But what we're going to do is build more of that key messaging, that conversion messaging, into our brand activity, such as the stuff we did around Jetstar and the Bachelorette and MasterChef. We're also aligning all our activities to the 2030 plan once that has been signed off. So we're working closely with the draft strategy to make sure our 1920 activity aligns to that. We'll be focusing on the top 70% of what we're calling the winners. So instead of like we've done this year, which we've gone for quantity, making sure we're everywhere, where anybody wants to book, we're going to go for quality. We're going to find those 70% of, of partners that really convert our travellers, and we're going to amplify and work closer with them. We're also going to make sure that they contribute in some way, of, or, or some way, either financially or through their own channels, much more than they're currently doing. The core messages of uh, nature and wildlife, of course, um, Aboriginal culture will still underpin all our brand activities and budget depending will still focus on those passion points such as the events, such as the, the adventure, military um, and food and beverage. The drive market will be reviewed and re-energised through next year as well. That's to upweight the amount of drive visitors, but also mitigate some of the changes that we're having in airline routes um, to make sure that we don't lose as many routes as, uh, or visitors through those routes as we may do anyway. Um, domestically, the over 50s will still be a core. We will focus on the 18 to 29s, obviously, but we will look to see where they're actually having an experience that doesn't meet their promise and focus on those experiences that do meet what they're looking for. And internationally, we're going to evaluate um, all the markets against what I've already mentioned, but also access, product alignment and growth potential. That will mean that we're putting the money where it's best 
uh, to generate an outcome. So we'll be looking at the international markets very heavily once our budget comes down. What does that look like in terms of activity? Very quickly, I'll run through this. With the brand review, we're looking at launching a new brand campaign in August, September. So that'll be in market with the new brand creative look and feel. That'll then roll out across all activities globally. Uh, top end wedding, we'll leverage that on into the future. So not just domestically, but when the international release dates are launched, we'll actually look at each market and see how we can amplify that, as well as location scouts. We've also got the opportunity around DVD sales and Netflix and those sort of channels that we can look at to potentially build the awareness. Um, Australia's Great Wild North still has destinations that it can be featured across, including Australia, which we're looking at doing in the new year, or the new financial year, and Abbey Homes. That's a series between six or nine episodes it will finalise to, and that series will focus the entire NT in a very engaging way. Australia, it's my backyard, our everyday playground, and I can't help but want to explore every single inch of it. Now, as a real sucker for adventure, I'm going to show you some of my favourite things to do and places to see throughout my action-packed and well-documented diary. So that'll be distributed globally in the new financial year. Messaging. Of course, we're still going to focus on getting onto as many lists as we can. Any list that we're not already on, we're going to be focusing on. We're going to make sure that um, all the key attributes that we're known for is fed through our PR approach, and that's through things like uh, the second phase of the travel, um, Australian Traveller promotion, where we're going to have a special emphasis on events. We're going to have a special emphasis on dispersal, especially drive. We're making sure we feature drive trails as much as possible to get that dispersal outside of our core hubs. When it comes to dispersal, as I've mentioned, Access is important. We've got to make sure that once somebody gets here, whether it's Darwin, whether it's Alice Springs, or whether it's Uluru, when they get here, they disperse outside of those centres. We've also got to make sure as many people as possible drive from their home destination. That's why drive is going to be a big focus for this new year, but we're only going to work with partners and in ways we know we're going to get results. Food and beverage. Again, Emphasis on the food and beverage, make sure we feature those experiences, both the existing and any new experiences that are being developed over this last year. Making sure we put them as part of that messaging, because it's a key motivator for people's travels. They want to know they're getting good food and beverage, but unique food and beverage. So we'll also partner with Hospitality NT again in the future. Um, history, so looking at our military history, making sure that the work we've done over this territory tribute is extended into the new year, but also around the Great Airway race, which is featured late this year as well, making sure that those history buffs really know that we're a destination to travel to. Adventure, of course, hiking, walking, mountain biking, birding, four-wheel driving will all be key messages to niche audiences that use those activities as their motivators to travel. And then, of course, conversion. As I've sent, said, we're going to focus on quantity over quality. So um, Tourism Australia uses bigger, better, fewer. We're using quality over, quanti quan quality over quantity. Get it right. Um, that means that we're really going to focus on those partners who do deliver, who have delivered, and can put more on the table to really amplify the money that we're putting on the table as well. Experience in advocating. So this is where we will really focus on those operators, those experiences that are actively positively generating um, reviews and recommendations and making sure we feature those wherever possible. And that's through more influencers that will actually talk to our audiences that are more aligned to travel. So I've kind of gone quite quickly, but that doesn't mean that I don't have lots more background, lots more information. So you're always available, always welcome to get that information through any of the channels, any of the resources we've got. And of course, um, if you can't get the information online, please give us a call, talk to us today. We're always available to give you any information to share the results, to share what's working, or of course, how you can be part of the activities coming up. So with that in mind, I think I've been given the, the a thumbs up, so I've made it quicker. I've made up some time, um, which is good because now we've got the panel that you can really ask the questions and grill them rather than me. So thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.